Well, let's see. Jim was born in Chicago in 1940, and he was raised there and went to high school there. And uh, one day, uh, he was walking through the gym on his way to band practice because he was very good at, in music. Uh, his family friend had given them a saxophone, and he took to it. And uh, he happened to see people on a trampoline in the gym, and he was very intrigued by that. And he became more interested and uh, decided uh, he'd like to do that. And the band director was really angry with him and said he had to choose between the band and <laughs> gym. But he chose the gymnastics. And that changed his whole life because he began to win uh, championships in high school. And the lucky part about that is when he graduated and had applied to the Air Force Academy, they needed somebody that could fill in the trampoline slot. <laughs> and so by happenstance, or golly sir, uh, coincidence, he happened to be the one that was uh, the champion, and they accepted him. He went to the Air Force Academy, and from there, then he went into um, to become a fighter pilot in Vietnam later on. And I met him in Del Rio, that he thought that was the end of his whole career and everything. And uh, I didn't expect to meet anybody there either, but friends had been praying for us, or they wanted us to, to meet, and so they got us together. And, he showed up at my door, and I thought he was the man that was going to fix my uh, chest. Uh, I had a, an antique chest, and there was someone from the Air Force there, and I, I talked to him, and I thought that's who this guy was going to be, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was a fellow that <laughs> wanted to meet me so we could go out, and um, he had suggested going out to this uh, dinner in Mexico because we were in Del Rio right across the border. And it so happened that those friends were my neighbors. I'd been involved with them with Boy Scouts with my son, Matt. And I thought, hmm, well, if this character is one of those fly boys, I'll be safe with my neighbors. And he was thinking, this gal is just not going to work out. I'm there with my friends. <laughs> Turned out that, that it, it just it was took. It was really good. Even my dog accepted him. That, my little dog that always barked and, you know, snipped at everybody, let Jim just walk right over him. Literally, <laughs> went to my living room. I said, something's wrong with my car dog. But it turned out that Jim was that kind of a person. He could gain your confidence and um, become your friend. And uh, he had some rough edges, of course, because uh, he couldn't have been in the field he was in without having some kind of uh, toughness in him. So he was a tough man on the outside. but. He had a very gentle side on the inside. And he was a great stepfather to my children because he just uh, he just stepped right into the role. I was so grateful. Oh, when we were going to move, I'm going to get emotional, <laughs> moving to Germany, because I met Jim a few weeks before I was due to leave for Germany for a two-year assignment with the Department of Defense. And my daughter was having a hard time. We had, she had just lost her father. Or their father had died a few months before. And she was worried about leaving her friends. And he said, you know, Misty, when you go overseas, there, there are people waiting for you to be their friend. And we took that as kind of a family mantra. And every time we had to move, mm -hmm. we'd say, well, as bad as it is to leave the friends we made here, there are other friends waiting to, to be made mm -hmm. over the other friendships. So he, was, he would make suggestions like that that were so wonderful and helpful. And uh, he was good to Matt, toughened him up and everything. Um, but one time he did something that was not so good. Matt was defending his sister, and Jim tried to put Matt in a brace, you know, a military brace, and just read him the ride act. And when he realized, you know, this is just, you know, a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> and um, he came back and apologized to Matt, and Matt just, that, that gained a lot of respect to Matt for uh, an adult to, mm -hmm. to, you know, apologize for wrongdoing. Um, mm -hmm mishandled in something. But then when Matt joined the Marines, I think he was grateful <laughs> for that praise because he knew what he was going to face then. Yeah. And Jim was, was tough but fair mm -hmm. with all of the kids. And when his own children came to visit with us, it was the same way. You know, everybody was treated the same way. I, although my children thought I was, you know, giving the others a better break. But uh, Jim gave everybody the same break. Mm -hmm. And he loved his music. He continued to play. Uh, even in retirement, he would play with a band, and he would say um, every week when he would go off, he would say, okay, I'm going off to practice. He'd take his beloved saxophone. And one time I found out that the saxophone he had, he came in from a band practice and said, guess what? He said, mm -hmm. this saxophone is, is really unusual. It was given to them by a family friend. He said, it's called the Naked Lady. And I said, what? 
and yes, on the front of the saxophone, it was, it was just like a ship's, you know, uh, the lady uh -huh. that put on the prow. Well, that's what the saxophone had. And we looked at each other and said, you mean all these years I've been letting you go out and play with a naked lady on every Tuesday night? <laughs> so that was her little family joke. So yeah. he, he had a great sense of humor. And he mm. could roll his eyes. Nobody else could do it like that. He could just uh, just make a sick to her stomach because he had this little, all these little tricks. He could uh, do stand up on his hands. He could do all sorts of uh, tricks like that because of the gymnastic mm. background. And uh, he just... He, he loved Christopher, whereas most people would have been appalled to have had a, a child with special needs. Jim really, truly embraced him. was mm -hmm. thrilled to care for him and put aside a lot of his own desires to take care of Christopher. Mm -hmm. And later on, when Misty became so ill and moved in with us, he was so good. Mm -hmm. I can't say anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs>